to worship the Lord. Um, for today, I want you guys to um, be ready. Um, also, get off your seat if you like to. We're just going to do some movements. I'm going to be introducing you guys to a new worship song. Uh, so I hope you're ready. But before we start it, let's just open up in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your love, Lord. I thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, I, I just thank you that you have continuously blessed us with the joy and the peace amidst the, the situation that's going on in the world, Lord Jesus. Thank you for showing us that we can be the blessing in the world, that we can be uh, the love and the joy that pour out to the peers around us, Lord Jesus, uh, to our friends, to our families. Thank you for um, putting the heart of worship inside of us, Lord. And today, Lord Jesus, I just want to lift your name on high. We just want to worship you because you are so, so worthy of our praises, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this time. And as we worship you, um, let our hearts be open to what we have to receive for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, the worship team, for an awesome time of worship. Just want to thank everybody who's been working behind the scenes to make this broadcast happen. You know, the worship leaders, the music arranger, uh, editors, and uh, let's not forget the counselors. We have counselors um, standing by every week uh, to talk with you and to pray with you. So if you uh, need to talk to somebody, and if you want us to pray for you, just uh, click the live prayer button if you join us in the church online platform. Or if you're in Facebook, just uh, drop a line in the chat room and we'll uh, reach out to you. All right. So today we are going to continue our series on Upgraded. And we are so privileged to have Brother Afandi um, share with us um, his insights, his experience. For those uh, of you who doesn't know um, Afandi, he is one of our youth coordinator. He's also part of the preaching team in our mother church, Indonesian Christian Church Canada. And he's also somebody that's uh, been a blessing in the marketplace. So it's a, it's really great that we can actually uh, listen uh, to him and learn from him. All right, so let us pray. Father God, just want to thank you that we can uh, gather here again this Sunday. And right now, Lord, we uh, ask that the Holy Spirit will speak to each one of us as we open our hearts as we allow you to just um, just go into our hearts and just uh, reveal uh, things that you want us to uh, experience as your upgrade thank you lord and just uh, pray blessings over afandi is going to share with us and um, may your word transform our lives in jesus name we pray amen Good morning. Welcome to Clay Online Church. Thank you for the privilege that you have given to me to be able to speak to you guys. Um, I would like to thank you personally to Pastor Danny that has given me the chance to speak against to Clay Church. Uh, it's really a privilege for me. As we get into the new series two weeks ago, we have learned that we have been upgraded. We are upgraded for a purpose. Last week, we learned that we are upgraded to serve. This week, I'm going to share another purpose why we are being upgraded, which is we are upgraded to set an example. Survey shows that unbeliever does not, does not have a problem with Jesus Christ but they do have a problem with Christian because they think that many Christian are hypocrite James 1 verse 22 tells us to be the doer of the world of God and not just the hearer I know that some Christian do not always provide the right example for us to follow. Some of Christian doesn't really care about the word of God. Some Christian may want to follow the word of God, but they find themselves much more interested in what other people say rather than in the word of God itself. And many of those are often Sometimes ourselves, we are following the footsteps of our misbehaving elderly and copying their unscriptural attitudes. Maybe we feel that as though we should join a cooler or a life church. Maybe we feel that we should live like the world. 
look like the world, dress like a world, talk like a world, to be all to be able to witness the unsafe. Yet, despite the mixed signal of and poor example that we see around us, we as a Christian, God wants us to honor Him and obey Him and live by example. The Word of God is very firm in the conduct of young people and their role in the church and the society. I believe that we must seriously consider what God's Word has to say about that. Are we just following the crowd? Or do we stand out as those who desire to be faithful and holy, despite the hypocrisy and compromise of all around us? We are constantly pressured by the social media to conform to the standard of the world, to be accepted by the world. Why? Because it is financially beneficial to them. They use us for our money without being cared about our physical being or even our spiritual being. Sadly, some, even some Christian who profess to be safe or who claim themselves to, be, to receive God as their God and Savior, receive Jesus as their God and Savior, also responsible to pressure other Christians to live like the world, act like the world, dress like the world. How are we going to respond to all of those challenges? In the New Testament, Paul addressed Titus as a young man. He said that, show them all by doing it yourself. Incorruptible in your teaching, your words solid and safe. Then anyone who is dead set against us, when he finds nothing weird or misguided, might eventually come around. As a young man, Titus was to be an example, a pattern to all other Christians in many areas of his life. Living an excellent life was not only honoring God, according to this verse, but it also stopped the mouth of those who would go against Him. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, it says that, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believer. In word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. As we look carefully on each of these six points, I would like to invite all of you to search ourselves and see where we are and what can we do to improve ourselves to be able to be an example to others. Right? We have to be an example of the believer. So let's start to learn about all of those. First one, inward. People of the world always think that it's always cool to put some swear word into every sentence they say. I can see it in, in my daily life, in office, they all like to at an effort in every sentence they say, right? Dating is cool, but that's how they see it. The Word of God clearly mentioned in the Bible to be careful of what you are saying because it either gives you life or kills you. It's your choice. As a believer, we should never imitate the bad language of the unsafe. Rather, we should desire that every sentence or every word that come out from our mouth to be 
acceptable in the sight of God, as is said in the following scripture. In Psalm 19, verse 14, May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We also need to be very careful with what you are going to say because it may leave a mark and hurt others. Imagine this illust illustration, right? When you hammer a nail into a wood, even after we remove the nail, it will still leave a mark or a hole in that wood. And that wood will never be as smooth as before. It is the same with every hurtful words that we are saying about others. Even if we do apologize. Right? So we must keep in mind that one day we have to be accountable for every words that we say. Even if we say it without thinking first. Which is in the Bible. We can see here. I tell you that on the day of judgment. People will have to account for every careless word they speak. That is in Matthew 12, verse 36. So God gave us two ears, one mouth, and a brain in between for a reason. Right? I believe that we should listen with our two ears and process it with our brain before we speak it out with our mouth. That is why the Word of God tells us to be quick to listen using the two ears that God has given to us, but slow to speak. Why? Because I believe we have to think before we speak. The second aspect of our area in our life that we want to be an example in is in conduct. As a believer, we also need to be an example in our behavior and our lifestyle. What we are seeing right now, especially in the social media, many of those are just the surface. They may look, they may look good in front of the world, but we never know what is really inside them, right? or how they really behave behind all those uh, uh, social media. When no one is looking. Integrity is one of the quality that is very rare in this in this time. Proverbs 11 verse 3 say that the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Do we behave the same when we are in front of a lot of people or when no one is looking? Do we treat others the same when we, they are in front of other people or when no one is looking. Remember, whether it is in a crowd or it is we by ourselves, Jesus is always be there. And he looks deep into the motivation and the intention of our heart. The third area of our lives that we want to be an example with is we want to be an example in love. Now, the word love in this verse speaks of unselfish and sacrificial love for another. This agape love means that we love our brother and sister in Christ to the extent that we sacrifice, we sacrifice our time, our comfort, or even our popularity in order for us to build them in faith. Now, when we truly love another, we will sometimes need to rebuke or correct them when, we move, when they move to the wrong direction. Even though by doing so, we might cause a resentment from them. It may cause them to be resentful to us, right? We must understand that this agape love is not shown by doing what is desired, but by doing what is needed for them. 
This is the same love that God has given to us when He died on the cross for our sin. In Galatians 6 verse 1, it says that, when, Brother and sister, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. So, not only that we have to love our brother and sister, but we also love the unbeliever. It is a privilege to be able to share a life-changing message with others. As we before, we are the same before. Before we are the unbeliever and somebody that already believed as a believer before us and share the gospel to us. So we want to be able to do that to our uh, to our friend that is still not believe in Jesus yet and share the gospel to them. The fourth area or the fourth uh, area where we want to be an example with is in spirit. So being as an example in the spirit is not just doing the right thing but also doing it with the right attitude and the right motivation. Oftentimes when the teachers, parents, pastor, or our boss telling us to do something, outwardly it looks like we are obeying them, but inwardly we feel frustrated, we feel angry about that assignment. So, the Bible clearly say about this attitude. He said that if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The scripture said to inherit the good of the land, we are not only to obey, but we also need to be willing. Obedient deal with the outward behavior, but willingness deals with the inward attitude. And we should have both of them. Right. Think about times when we have actually ruined our testimonies before others or even be before the unbeliever. Be not because we are not responsible or we are not obedient, but simply because we are not willing to do that. And the others will see our attitude true and true. The scripture tell us that we to we teach us to do everything for the glory of God, as in First Corinthians ten, verse thirty one. The apostle Paul also tells us that whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for the human master. So, if you have this scripture and you really live your life on this scripture, you will have no problem with all the responsibility that you will give, it will be given to you. You will, you will have the same behavior whether your boss is looking at you, doing the work that you need to do, or he is somewhere else and just giving you the task need to be done. He will, you will, you will be responsible because you know that your real boss is Jesus. So it is impossible for us to genuinely do everything to the glory of God, and in the same time possess a bad attitude. It is impossible. Now the fifth. Areas that we can be an example in is in faith. To be an example in faith means mean that we must know what we believe and why we believe it. The word faith is not simply mean that we believe in something, but we also firmly convicted in our belief. In order to be firmly convicted, there is no shortcut. 
The only way is to study the word of God and work and walk with God intimately. To be an example in faith, we need to spend our time daily, not only to read, but also to study the, study the Word of God. Oftentimes, we begin a Bible study plan. Usually in the New Year's, I want to do uh, reading the Bible for the whole year. I want to start this uh, Bible plan. But after a few weeks, or maybe just a few days, we start to fail. And when this happens, forget about all those fail attempt and move on and start reading again and start to study the Bible again. It is it is much better to read a couple of verses and study it rather than you read the whole book and don't understand anything. Study the Bible day by day. Right, so it is very important that we do not neglect the, the daily walk with God by reading His Word and also communication in the prayer. Our personal walk with God, it is the most important thing and is more is much more important than anything else in this world. If our daily quiet time with God is neglected, then we will fail to be the godly example that we need in our work, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Last but not least, God also tells us in His Word to grow in faith in second in in uh, in Second Thessalonians uh, one verse three, um, to pass on our faith in Second Timothy uh, two verse two. The the first one is in the First Thessalonians First Thessalonians one verse three. Uh, the pass on our faith is in Second Timothy two verse two, and the third one to keep our faith which is in Hebrew 10, verse 23. Now, the last area of our life that God wants us to be an example with is in purity. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 to 4, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. It is not easy to have a sexual purity in this time. When something that was considered immoral 20, 30 years ago, but right now it is considered a norm. Our social standard of morality, especially in sexual purity, is getting worse from time to time. But we as the children of God must hold on to the word of God that never change yesterday, today, and forever. And when it comes to sexual sin, the Bible told us in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to flee from sexual immorality. And we can learn this a lot from uh, Joseph, when he is being tempted to sleep with Potiphar's wife, he fled from it and considered that as sinning against God. So, as a final thoughts, this is some of the things that uh, I want to convey this. And uh, it is it's definitely, it's not an easy or it's not easy to be a godly example in the midst of a broken down world where the standard of morality is keep declining from time to time people in this world and sadly including many of the Christian are certainly it's not encouraging or supporting 
those of us who desire to become more grounded in the Word of God. And also, on the contrary, and Satan is also trying to do everything he can to discourage us, to make us feel alone. To, uh, to pressure us to loosen up or to persuade us to the peer pressure and social media. But we must remember that we are upgraded for a purpose. To be an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So, with that, I'm going to start with the first one, which no one is perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. No one is perfect. Jesus is. Right? Don't let the mistakes made by your brother or sister in Christ become an excuse for us to give up, to try to be an example in every areas of our life. Do not let the disobedience of the compromise of other believers be an excuse for us to throw the towel. Right? Remember that sometimes we make mistakes too. I, I often hear this statement that um, if you are looking for a church, or so, no, if you are looking for a perfect church, the moment you come in, that church is not perfect anymore. So, remember that no one is perfect. Second, we are all being called to be a full-time Christian. In my opinion, all of us as the believer are the full-time minister as we are all the ambassador of Christ in this world. This means that we are individually responsible to walk intimately with God, to reach the lost, and to be an example in our daily life in those six areas. Those are not jobs for Pastor Danny or the full-time staff only. Those are also the job for all of us as the Christian. Right. So that's the second one. The third. Be sincere in your walk with God. But be sincerely right. Do not base our sincerity on what other people telling you. Or based on our experience. Rather, we have to dig it. And you have to find it in the Word of God based on those Word of God. You have to base on that rock, based on Jesus, based on the based on the Bible. Right? And we have to have a real relationship with Christ. Sincerity alone is not enough. We are to serve God in sincerity and in truth. Lastly, never give up. Breaking news, we all will fail. And we will fail again and again and again and again. Keep striving to be an example of other believers and unbelievers alike. In word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith and in purity all we need to do is to obey him and give ourselves to him and to his will difficult times will come loneliness anxiety peer pressure and discouragement everything negative that you can think of will come your way during your walk with god but god is faithful and always remember that God's perfect grace will always be available for us to bring us to the victory that God has prepared for us. Now, this topic is one of the hardest to preach about because 
trust me, even when I'm doing this preaching, the recording, it is, it is, I'm actually preaching to myself. To be an example in those six area of your life is not easy. In fact, I will say it is impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. And I want to remind you again that you have been upgraded and you have been upgraded for a purpose. And because you have been upgraded, you also been upgraded to set an example to our fellow Christians and to other unbelievers. Thank you for the privilege to serve and I hope that the Word of God will bless and change your life. Happy Sunday. Thank you, Afandi, for the word. Um, we've heard the hard truth. We are upgraded to set an example. And the hard truth is, is not really something that we like to hear sometimes. It's not really you know, something that is easy to digest, especially to apply. And uh, many times, yeah, we find excuses of not to do it. Uh, maybe because, not because we don't want to, but as Afandi shared, you know, and he experienced it too, I experienced it too, that maybe sometimes we try it many times and we fail many times. And somehow we believe that it's just impossible for us to achieve. But there is a good news to that. And that's the reason why Jesus came on earth 2,000 years ago. He lived 33 years. And, and which, you know, the, the three years was heavily recorded in the four Gospels. And he showed us that it is possible to live out the character of God that is in us. How is, how is it possible for him? Remember that he is not only God, but he is also 100% human. And he experienced all the temptations, all the challenges that we uh, face today. So John 15, 9 says this, and that's when the Pharisees challenged him. Jesus said, Jesus gave him this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. So Jesus did whatever the father who is indwelled in him had done. Now, Jesus, who is righteous and holy, is us. He is indwelled in us. So, because of that, we will be able to live out whatever listed in 1 Timothy 4.12 from the power of Jesus that's already in us. We can do it because we've been upgraded. And one more time, I'm going to say it. We can do it because we've been upgraded. The struggle is not about what we can or what we cannot do. But what prevents us from allowing Jesus to live his truth out of us? So let's think about it right now. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and allow the Holy Spirit to dig into our heart. What are the things that have been blocking us from living out Jesus' holiness and righteousness that are already in us? Maybe for some is our pride, for some insecurities, maybe hurt, disappointments, wrong self-image. Maybe we're afraid of what people might think of us. Perhaps you feel that you have physical, mental, or even spiritual disabilities, whatever it is. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you right now. Allow Him to comfort you, to heal you, to encourage you. So right now, just, just meditate on Him. Just connect with Him that's already inside of us. And Lord, I pray for everyone listening. I pray, Lord, that sometimes, yeah, we think that following you is so hard. 
we think that a life living a life that sets an example it's something impossible for us to do but Lord right now right now we realize that it is not me it is not I but it is Christ that lives through me Christ that lives through me that will enable us to love that will enable us to live righteously that enable us to live a life of blessing and Lord I pray I pray that today as we are reaching out to you that you reveal to us all the things that's blocking us that prevents us from realizing what's already in us something that stopped us from trusting that we can do it and Lord as, as you show us help us help us to be able to just get rid of it and you just say yes this thing has been blocking me there's a hurt in my heart for some of you it probably is something in the past maybe somebody said something to you that you just not good enough I feel that somebody in here in here is this feeling that yeah there's such an unworthiness in you and right now God is really telling you you are my son you are my daughter you are worthy you are worthy enough for me to die for you for some of you it's pride for some thinking that yeah I've I've get everything I don't need this but Jesus is reminding you that even though we have everything we are still sinners that needs redemption and that's the reason why Jesus come into the world for you so whatever situations that you're in whatever challenges that you face Jesus has conquered that for you and because of that now you have been upgraded now you can live out the righteousness that's a, and the holiness that's already in you and you can live a life that sets an example thank you Lord thank you Jesus and as we prepare our hearts for the rest of the week Lord continue to speak to us daily hallelujah in the name of Jesus we pray amen Now it's time to worship Him through our tithes and our offerings. If you haven't done it, you can do so now by clicking the, um, the giving tab on a church online or go to our website claychurch.org.org and uh, click giving there. Um, you, can, um, you can give directly and it takes you uh, right to our Tithely apps and you can give directly there. Let us pray. Father God, just want to thank you for everything that we receive we know that outside of you we can do nothing but in you we have an abundance Lord and so right now we just want to give our tithe and our offering and Lord we as we pray we want to anoint it and we want to release it so that this money will go towards those who need it so they can experience you more in Jesus name we pray amen We have uh, quite a bit of announcement today, so um, 
The first one is about our benevolent fund. I know some of us are going through a tough time right now, physically and perhaps financially as well. So as a church, we want to help those who are in need. So if there's any way we can help you or you know of someone who can use some help, please reach out to us. You can reach out to your cell group leaders or you could, you could uh, just uh, contact me directly. Uh, we have a, our benevolent fund set up for that. And if you would like to don donate to the Benefolent Fund, you may do so by choosing Benefolent as your type of giving in our Tithely app. And we are still meeting every Wednesday. It's been a great time of worshiping through reading the Word and to encourage one another and to pray for one another. So if you haven't joined us, I want to encourage you to do so. Uh, this week we'll be reading James 1. So um, on Wednesday, Look for the details in our Facebook and Instagram. And Brian Jonathan is also holding a daily worship at 9 a.m. Um, 9 p.m. Sorry, not at 9 a.m. 9 p.m. So um, the details are are on our website, on our Facebook and Instagram. So um, you know, it's only a few minutes, no talking, just pure worshiping. So this is a great time that we can really set aside for God and you know in the midst of our busyness or our day before we actually take a rest okay. and uh, another thing as government are opening up the restriction uh, uh, for gathering we are also preparing ourselves for uh, returning to our physical gathering to our building also we don't know um, we we don't know it's when it's going to be but the preparations needs to start uh, now. So um, Clay Church is launching a survey to see what everyone think about uh, how we need to manage our physical gathering. So please take time to fill it out, all right? Uh, it is very important that we get your perspectives so that we can do a proper and relevant uh, planning. So the link to the survey will be available uh, on your Facebook in the Clay Facebook page and also Clay Instagram. So uh, click on it, it will direct you to the to the survey. It's only take a few minutes, but please, please, please just want to encourage you, uh, fill it up because we want to know. We want to be able to set up, you know, a, a place or a facility that we can actually worship together in a safe environment, okay? Um, so that's all the announcements for today. Let's receive the blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And know that with his death and resurrection, Jesus has given us everything we need to lift up our identity as children of God in this world and live a life of example. So let us all receive that truth and declare it over our life every day. Receive this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and those who receive it say, Amen.
a thousand generations And your family and your children And their children and their children May His favor be upon you And a thousand generations And your family and your children And their children and their children